Hey everyone, I wanted to take a moment before the episode starts to let you know, um, or give you a heads up, I should say, about the mic quality of this episode. Um, We're still trying to figure out what exactly happened, but it does sound like we are recording in a truck stop bathroom for some reason, so I wanted to let you know so it's less jarring when the episode actually starts. Thank you so much for listening and hope you enjoy this episode. There are clearly good, good movies and clearly bad, bad movies, but sometimes we'd like to put on all the earth tone colored clothes we have and break into a billionaire's house to find out what is everything in the middle. This is good, bad, bad, good. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode of Good, Bad, Bad, Good. My name is Travis and I am a director. And with me, as always, is... Hi, I'm Kailena Mai. I am an actor and a writer. And... What's up? My name is Brian, and I'm a video editor. And we are here today to discuss the film Windfall. I can remember on my wedding day, everyone was just waiting. And I was standing there, staring down at my feet. Babe! You're not, you're not answering me because now I'm yelling or because you can't hear me. Holy fuck! Which, did either of you look up info on, like, who directed Wait. Uh, wait. Yeah, I know all of it. I knew it before I saw the movie, which is why I suggested it, because I actually really liked this movie. Okay, uh, if you want to give us a little bit of what year it came out. Yeah. Who directed it? It, it came out this year. Um, just give me two seconds. Which is 2022. It came, oh yeah, Hi. Hi, we're in 2022. Yeah. Um, so this was directed by Charlie McDowell, who is actually uh, Mary Steam Virgin and Malcolm McDowell's child. Whoa. Yeah. He went to AFI and he works with Justin Ladder, who was the writer, one of the writers of this. Um, they also did the movie The One I Love, which mm-hmm. I was obsessed mm-hmm. with, um, which is what made me want to see this movie when it came out. Um, the one I love was sort. It had Mark Duplass, and mm-hmm. it's a very Duplass brothers style, like slow burn. Which this was also the other writer in this that co-wrote it this time with Justin Ladder was um, Andrew Kevin Walker, who is also the writer of like Seven and Panic Room and Eight Millimeter, Sleepy Hollow. He's done stuff for like ever. Um, so what you're saying is this film should have been better. Got it. Okay. Um, well, I very much enjoyed it, but I also enjoyed it from like the how to make an indie movie perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could totally see that. Um, so before we jump into our decision, um, let's or like how we st- our stance on it. Um, let's get a synopsis of the film for everyone that is listening. Hey, Google, what is the plot synopsis for the film Windfall? Here's the synopsis of Windfall. A man breaks into a tech billionaire's empty vacation home, but things go sideways when the arrogant mogul and his wife arrive for a last minute getaway. Thanks, Google. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Google. But is there anything else? uh, Because I do feel like sometimes the plot synopsis is not not enough. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if the mics picked that up, but we're laughing because uh, Google just said thank you back when I clearly was not talking to her anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, is there any so other... that just like a man to shut down a woman when she thinks it. <laughs> oh I clearly gosh. wasn't talking to her anymore. <laughs> um, is there any other uh, plot points that obviously we'll do a deep dive into the script and whatnot? But before we start, that you feel like the audience needs to know. That seemed pretty pretty succinct and to the point. <laughs> yeah, cool. it's yeah. a very simple film that way. So yeah. cool, cool, cool. It. Okay, um, so I will go last, but uh, for everyone out there, we all have a verdict on the film right now. We either chose if it is a good, bad film or a bad, good film. Um, so Brian, you're up first. Yeah. How would I, you categorize this film? I kind of struggled with how to categorize this, and I think where I landed on is it's a bad, good movie. But I don't, I also kind of enjoyed it though. So like, I don't think it's a bad movie, but I feel like for this, for the categories and the way we're looking at things, the way I'm viewing good, bad, bad, good, 
I guess I would say it's a bad, good movie. Okay. Awesome. I can see the judgment in your eyes, guy. No, no, no. I'm in the exact same boat okay. because I actually, for the purposes of this podcast, will call it a bad, good movie. But if I'm honest, I just thought this was a good movie. Um, I, yeah, no, I'm going to leave it at that. But for the purposes of the podcast, bad, good movie. Cool. Um, my opinion <laughs> is that it's a bad, good movie because it should have been a whole lot better than what it was. Wait, did we all just agree? Yeah, we did. Wow. But has this happened yet? It has never happened before. <gasps> <Wow>. Buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. All right. Thank you for tuning in this week <laughs> for this episode of Good, Bad, Bad, Good. Um, well, yeah, that's uh, that's a first ever. I don't think we've ever all agreed. Um, we all very much disagree on the film probably, though. So we're going to break down the film into three different categories. First up is going to be plot and synopsis. So, um, Kai, I'm going to go with you first. No offense, Brian, but it's just because you are so excited about this film. I feel like you're going to very much carry this episode. Um, (laughs) What did you, what were thoughts about uh, plot and synopsis? What are my thoughts about (laughs) plot and synopsis? Um, I just have to preface though, this episode with the fact that I have, uh, I've been limping for the last several days and I've been on a bunch of pain meds. So I'm slightly loopy. Um, I just have a bad bout of sciatica. So just throwing that out there in case I uh, do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it possibly okay. impairs your judgment in films. <laughs> Got yeah, it. yeah, 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 of course. Um, no, because I watched this film pain and medication free and then the pain started after the film um <laughs> not because of the film though not to, not due to the film um so i was in pain after the film so it's all good <laughs> I, I understand no so the plot and synopsis of this um i i really enjoyed i just thought it was so simple um sort of film noir in a sense um i i i being an actor and a writer, I look for the simplicity in storytelling. Um, and I also look for stories that are vehicles for actors. And this 100% was one, right? Mm-hmm. This It's so simple. And it it's just the, the motives are easy. We understand what's happening, which may be to you or to somebody who doesn't so much like the movie. It could be like, okay, I'm bored now. Um but I, I don't know. I, the, I thought the actors were great, so I thought the plot was carried well by them. Um, yeah, and I thought it was strong and and simple. I don't really, I don't think I have much more to say than that. Yeah. Um, I will agree that it's a very like simple plot and like set up and like it's super effective. Um, I just liked it better when it was Parasite. But Brian, what did you <laughs> feel about the plot synopsis and script? Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with Kai. I think. It was extremely simple, but that's kind of all it needed to be. Um, And I Mm -hmm. kind of enjoyed some of the more mundane aspects of what you watch these three people, sometimes four, but mostly three people go through. Um, Mm -hmm. I think where it kind of lost me where there were some parts where it felt like it dragged a little too long. It could have been trimmed a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, Some scenes could have been shorter, and, and there were definitely... I mean, I'll talk about this when we get into more cinematography and editing, but some shots held for a really long time, which was kind of effective sometimes. And sometimes I felt like not as much, but in terms of the plot, I mean, I, I don't really know what else I would have wanted to see these characters go through. I felt like it kind of hit the notes that it was going for. And from that standpoint, I thought it was effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I will just add to that by saying, um, I, I don't want to spoil anything since this is such a new we're movie. Gonna so it. we're going to spoil it. Yes, it's going to be spoiled. Like, the, spoiled. There's no way that we could talk, okay, especially because so a, a, be a lot of my issues are third act issues. Okay, yeah. So only be listening to this if you've seen yeah. the movie or don't care to see the movie. But then why are you? This listening is also to this? a decent spoiler alert right here. Yeah. Why are you listening to any of our episodes if you haven't seen the movie? Because you're, you're, we're going to spoil it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, so I actually really I, I wasn't expecting. The plot to go where it went. I noticed the birth control when he notices it, right? When Jason Siegel notices it in her purse. But 
I didn't notice it well enough to keep me to keep it in the back of my head. So I didn't expect it to come around later. Um, but it was also so very simple. Um, I loved that Jason Siegel in the end says fuck you to her. You, you know, you think that maybe they're they're kind of connecting or having some Yeah, I thought they were gonna end up faint... together. <laughs> yeah, I didn't quite think that, but I thought they were connecting enough on a level that they were like citing, yeah. right? That they were gonna be on the same side in the end. But I love that he basically is like, you're a part of the fucking problem too. Yeah. And screw you. And which then causes her to be like, well, fuck everybody. Yeah. And I, okay, I just, I just hit a chord. I just realized part of the reason why I love this movie is in the end, the woman is like, fuck all of you men. I'm taking a step forward for my own life. And that I just enjoy. Um, It's funny because I actually really dislike what they did with the female character like i feel like none of her actions made sense which made which boiled this character that could have had a lot of agency down to like an emotional woman that is just like reacting to like the last thing that was said to her like the last thing that like the light you know it's like this very in the moment like i'm just emotionally reacting to what you're saying right now and i'm not actually thinking through and processing anything like uh, i i totally get what you're saying i will i and maybe this is like a faux pas or something i shouldn't say but i'm a very emotional person as a woman i think that's a female thing and i react from my emotions mm -hmm. quite often and maybe I, but I, I'm also an actor so maybe I'm a little bit of a psycho but um, so my uh in terms of the the plot synopsis and script um I thought the plot and synopsis was great I thought the script was lacking I thought like the actual nuts and bolts the words that were being said were so overly like so heavy handed on everything that you they don't know what it's like to be a rich thing. white billionaire or like true. Or like just, I, I feel like every single, or like the Jason Siegel's character of like, you don't know what it's like to be me. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, clearly you're hitting us over the head with like, there's this class divide. Like, it, it just felt so force fed and like, and like spoon fed that it, it like the, the classic like script uh, or writing tip, sorry, of like show, don't tell, like, like show us the characters that are like that, not tell it. And right. I to I, I get that. And I I totally see it. Um, I actually wrote down two of the lines, which I think are the lines that they use in the trailer, too, lines, which are like um, Jason Siegel says, you owe a debt to a hell of a lot more people than just me. And uh, and uh, Jesse Plemons character says, try being a rich white guy these days. It sucks. But I actually I I loved those. And but I completely understand what you're saying. Um, I think. I was willing to ride the wave with them simply because the the um, stakes were set so high. The plot sets the stakes so high that it's like, fuck it, we're going to say everything that we need to say, even if it is heavy handed, because we're in this dire moment and because Jesse Plemons character seems like such an ass that he is just going to be like, screw you. But I you know where I did think it was a little heavy handed was um, when when Jason Siegel is holding the gun and Jesse Plemons is like, you're not gonna do it because you don't ever do anything. But he like, got, he needed one line there, one crisp, beautiful line, but they gave him like seven where he was saying the same thing over and over. I, I feel like that was this whole film for like majority yeah. of it. When like the characters are supposed to be connecting, it's like them over explaining things that are happening in their life. And about halfway through, I'm like, oh, these aren't actual people. These are just car caricature stand-ins for like the points that like this writer is trying to make. Like they're not actually developed people because we don't really learn much about them other than like the the things that are going on in the immediate, like we get their try, like it's every, if you really think about what we learned about the two main characters, the um, Jesse Plemons and uh, Lily. Lily Tomlin, not not Lily Tomlin, Lily no. Collins. <laughs> if this was with Lily Tomlin, oh my gosh, so much. It would be better. a very different movie. So much better. Also, um, though, it would be saying something very different. Lily too. Tomlin was sleeping with Jesse Plemons. 
and yeah. trying Jesse to have Clemens a baby. Would be like, she won't have a kid for me. And Lily Tomlin's like, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> the technology doesn't exist yet. Uh, um, yeah, so that's how I felt. And like, um, kind of point, this is kind of jumping ahead to acting, but like one of my lines, like, in the moments that you're talking about where Jesse Plemons is talking to Jason Siegel with the gun, um, he says, he can't act it. I don't believe him at all. And I'm like, yeah, I don't believe any of those. <laughs> um, but the question I wanted to ask for both of you, because you had said that it was such high stakes. I had an issue with the stakes from the beginning because like they should, they, they get to the house and then he's like trying to leave and they catch him at the door when he's leaving. And then they just go along with everything he says. Like, he doesn't have a gun. He doesn't have any weapon in his hand. I had that like, same Like, he literally has too. nothing. At one point, wait, it wait, looked wait. like he was doing the old hand in the coat pocket type thing. He was. Yeah. But in, not in the coat pocket. It's in his back. He puts his hand in the back of his pants. Right, right, like, he's got yeah. a gun behind him. Um, because later, Jesse Plemons is like, you didn't, I don't think he had a gun. I don't think he ever had a gun. So I liked, because I agree, but then they called attention to it. Agreed. But it was just, it like, Jason Siegel just isn't a... Terrifying enough yeah, person. Yeah, like, I, I'm like, wait, we're really just going to, like, okay, like, sit down. Yeah, he's and a like, big man. He's tall. Sure, he's a big man, but there's two, like, if, <laughs> he didn't if, if you think your life wily, is on the line... though, as yeah. you might want a character to be. But, yeah, you're going, you're definitely going into acting here. Yeah, and like if you're if you're if you think your life is on the line, like if someone showed up like that and it was Amanda and I, like I would probably try to attack Amanda him. Amanda is Travis's wife. Yes. <laughs> I would probably try to attack him and tell her to like run away or something. Obviously I know Jesse well, Plane's character would not be such not a everybody's brave as tough soul. as you are, Trav. Oh my I gosh. Know. Brian, you would do the same exact thing. <laughs> Kai, would you you would do the same exact thing if someone was trying to attack you and Benny. You would say, Benny, run away. <laughs> Benny is Kai's dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that made me sound really sad and lonely. No. <laughs> Amanda is Travis's wife. Benny is Kai's dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lonely spitzel old woman. <laughs> um, but um, I will say, because they went along so easy, <laughs> I thought from the beginning, I'm like, oh, the wife is in on this. Like the wife is a part. Really? Yeah. See, my my whole thought one. was just these are just such white collar people who have never, you know, like I mean, like you said before, we don't really know anything about what what their lives are like before this movie takes place. But like Jesse Plemons seems like the kind of dude who's just typing away at his keyboard and created some tech company or like a Zuckerberg type. So like mm -hmm. I don't, he doesn't strike me as the type who would have that in him to really fight back. No, yeah, he he strikes you as the type that does the thing that he does to me, which is I'm going to throw money at the problem. Mm -hmm. Right away he's like, "What can I give you? Take this, take that." He's kind of like, "I don't care." And we see that later when it comes back with the fact that he's thrown money at the problem with this woman Pam or Debbie. 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 Thank you. Which we never know what that means. Really. Oh, like yes, that. we do. I mean, you pretty much He know. got Debbie pregnant and Debbie had to go away. <laughs> oh, you think that you think that Deb, that Debbie got pregnant? I was thinking at least an affair, if not pregnant. an affair, yeah. possibly a pregnancy, yeah. something with Debbie that just needed yeah, to I, go Yeah, I mean, away. I figured it was somewhat like she, he definitely like paid a woman off to be silent in some way, right. and like they even mentioned the NDA, but I didn't think pregnancy like that. Yeah, maybe I. I just feel like that's another level of like he wants a kid and. There was a pregnancy, like, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I guess I just didn't think that. I no, thought maybe I, it, I, I, maybe I thought it was I like just... a sexual assault or a, oh, like yeah. a workplace okay. sexual assault uh, or okay. an affair. Oh, interesting. Possibly. Well, that's but see, I kind of like that. So so this is a this is like a like. You may not like that they didn't give so much detail in the plot, but I like the fact that they didn't give so much detail in the plot. I like the, f I don't like the fact that they didn't give, Kai is so mad, she no. is storming out no. of the studio right now. Benny's calling. She's right, oh my god, oh, she slammed the door, she and just hit she her dog. is, yeah, she's not coming, she just hit her dog. <laughs> oh my gosh. Benny, are you okay? 
His collar was jingling. I thought it would be too loud in the thing. Okay. Um, what was frustrating to me is that they gave too much on things that didn't matter and not enough on things that that did matter to me personally. This is obviously my opinion. But like Jason Siegel's character, like we don't really know anything about him. But like he's not this like crazed sociopath like figure. Like I'm think about like the Joker, right? Like or like even if you're going to go to like Shakespeare, like Iago and Othello. We don't know anything about them, but they're that evil and that. But what? I love the fact that like okay, so normally to see somebody rob people, right? You have to be a very desperate person in a very desperate moment in your life to do that unless you are evil, right? Clearly he's not the evil, so he's desperate. However, he didn't he wasn't so he didn't play it so wily and desperate and I don't think it's in the plot that way as you as you might think because he explains he wasn't actually trying to rob them. That's not what he went there for. I mean, take a couple things, the Rolex, the uh, ro- ro- the Rolex, the Rolex, the Rolex, um, the money that he found there, but he wasn't planning for them to be there. And he also like he says, I just wanted to know what it was like to be you. I just wanted to walk around this property. So there's this strange part of that to me that really speaks to society right now. And like this, this the, the social media and every, people just trying to feel important, feel famous, feel known, feel seen, feel heard. And so I, I really liked that part of the plot and the story that it's like, I don't, I don't even need the $500,000 or half a million or whatever it is that he ends up asking, finally realizing he could have. He's not even thinking about that. He just really wants to know what it's like to live in the life of this person who took something from him. And there's something really interesting to me about that that you don't see with other movies. So I really appreciated that part of the plot. One other thing, um, sort of along those lines, but also kind of not, but whatever um in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning of the movie um when you talk to you, you just <laughs> kai you're right but this is why you're wrong <laughs> no, no i'm not even it's not even something i'm disagreeing it just reminded me um when you said like that he just kind of wanted to know what it was like to be them so i had heard of this movie didn't really know anything about it so i didn't even read the plot synopsis going into it i kind of like to go into these things cold most of the time um so in the beginning I did not know. I liked the fact that it was almost like a little twist in the first five minutes of, oh, wait, this guy doesn't actually live here. Because, like, the first couple of minutes, he's just sitting at the pool, pouring himself a drink. He looks like he is the tech billionaire that lives there. And so I kind of liked that part of the plot where when I realized that he was wiping down the handles, I think is what it was. And I was like, oh, shit, he's robbing them. This isn't his house. I thought that was kind of a fun little twist. Yeah. Yeah. I... So I, I disagree with you, Kai, and here's why. Um, <laughs> so, and maybe this isn't even like a disagreement with you is more of like a critique of like the script and like what they're choosing these characters to say. Um, he says the line of like, yes, I wanted to know what it was like to be you or like to live here oh my gosh kai is so mad again oh my she god is it's my sciatica out. i'm just standing up <laughs> ignore me keep talking um do you want to attach it to that though okay um he says like i wanted i want to know what it was like to be you or whatever right but like me personally i didn't actually believe that like he's still stealing from them but then he has the other line when he asks for one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they like laugh at him and then he says you don't know how much that could change someone else's life so it's like, so he is desperate and he does want money, obviously, but then also like, we're also no, supposed to- No, I don't think he's desperate and he, I mean, he, he clearly, he, he, he does, but though. he does need that, but no, you see I, but why this still, doesn't make sense, Kai. It's both, right? It's, it's, he's desperate enough. He's out enough in his, down and out in his life enough that he's- willing to go to this place and find something, right? What can this guy give me? But but the but the real I think thing that drew him there, right? Cuz he could have robbed anybody was 
like to know what this man this because he felt scorned by this man too this is the one that took my livelihood this is the one that took something from me so like i need but we to don't know what it's actually like know that like he never says no, but but he Jesse makes the Plemons... offhanded comments that the algorithm like shuts some businesses down or whatever. But and... we don't actually know if that's his motivation. But Jesse Plemons asks him several times, like, "What company did you work for? What company did you work for?" So we're to un we're to assume that this has happened. People have come off come to Jesse Plemons several time character several times with complaints, right? Or he's written up in the media as this mogul fuckhead who has taken over jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I thought it was made pretty clear that we don't ever actually know, but we assume that Jason Siegel did work for one of his companies or was affected by it did you through the conversation. Well? Yeah, I did. I could see that. I just didn't think it was clear enough to actually have me. Clearly, Kai crystal. and I are smarter than you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> one other one other quick question that I had um, is anybody else wondering where that random security camera in the tree? Like, who's do you do you think that was Jesse? Plum? There are so many. Or there's so many funny problems. In the, the, I, I just okay. Yes, that is the one part of the plot where I, I uh, Travis's eyes just like rolled to the top of his one part. <laughs> one part murder. Um, so that, that's that, the one unbelievable thing no, in this no, whole no. story. No, it was just the one part that I was like, wait, they don't have any security on this property. Why? And then two. If that's true, then whose camera was that? That really is the neighbor's camera or whatever. Or yeah. three, they actually do have cameras all over the property. And uh, and what's his name? But the thing is, if they did have, if it is option three, they should. We should have seen other cameras then. Like like this this robber is like conveniently smart when the plot needs him to be smart and then like really stupid when the plot <laughs> needs him to be stupid. You know what was so stupid, but I kind of loved it, was the three of them chasing each other through the orange grove. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was so dumb, but also really funny to me. Wait, I just want to point out, since we're talking about script, because I really appreciate this, mm -hmm. that the characters' names, because I keep referring to them as the actors' yeah. names, and oftentimes I, I, I end up talking about talking about the characters with the characters' names, and I, I realize I'm not doing that because the characters' names in the script, Lily Collins' name is The Wife, J Jason Siegel's name is Nobody, and Jesse Plemons' name is CEO. So they don't actually, we never actually hear their names in the movie, which I appreciated because that's part of the context of what they're trying to do with this film, right? Yeah. We're making a point. I think one of my, my favorite parts was when the three of them are just sitting there watching Three Amigos because it just yes. something about it just cracked me up. I'm also like Jason Siegel and Lily Collins are clearly enjoying themselves while watching the movie because it's a great movie. But it was just very funny to be like, like I was speaking, I think I used the word mundane before. It's like the mundaneness of a very not mundane situation kind of just cracked me up. I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. Yeah, and I also... See, I thought it was so heavy-handed. I'm like, all right, three amigos, they're three, they're three people, and, like, they're going towards this path of, like, gonna, like, they're gonna be talking soon and, like, talking... Like, I just thought it was so heavy-handed. See, and I... And they're, like, in the desert, and, okay, I get it. And, like, I know, I, I appreciated that there was more subtlety or, or more depth, I felt like, to that particular movie being chosen and and like the, i didn't think it was subtle that only one of the amigos finds water and is gonna survive right and i'm like okay clearly only one of them is gonna get out right the other one like okay you hated the device we get it <laughs> um i i appreciated though that it also for me that's such a goofy movie mm -hmm. that like the two people that's driving me crazy Travis is picking at, at his pen. That's crazy. crazy. I'm sorry. Okay. Cut that. Debbie? No, her name's not Debbie. What's Jen, her name? Jen Star. Jen. <laughs> Actually, um, Jen Star, keep this part in there. She calls you Debbie. <laughs> Jen Star is the, the editor. I just don't know her yet. So thank you, Jen. And sorry Jen for Star. calling you Debbie. It's Jen Star. Jen Star. Yeah. Sorry. One Correct. Word. One okay. name. 
wait, I'm all off now. What was it saying? Oh, it's such a goofy movie. Um, and it's so the the fact that like both Jason Siegel and Lily Collins are laughing about it and there there seems to be some like understanding between the two of them that like I just really understood that like they both had a life before the money that maybe looked very different than the life of the CEO, right? Like I even imagine the CEO, Jesse Plemons character to to have been born and bred in money. Even though he has made his own thing, He's like um, Musk. right, right, exactly. And so, so there was something fun about that too. Of like, he just hates these two. He the look that Jesse Plemons gives them that he just hates these two idiots who are laughing at this idiotic thing. There's like lifelessness to him in that moment. So I, I appreciated that they used that movie, but I, I get that you don't like that plot device. Too heavy handed. Um, I also oh. thought the glass was really dumb. Like she- The he, glass? Yeah, that she cuts the cords with at the end. Oh, I'm I like, agreed. He just happened, like he was stupid enough to tie her feet on top of glass and not move that glass. And also that glass is like 15 feet away from the door that shattered and the glass would have went outwards, not inward. I'm like, all, so many things about this oh, plot yeah. is so contrived and like forced and like it just happened to happen. No, I didn't either. I didn't so that. who's the smart one now? I was like the one character <laughs> that I like in this whole film, they shove glass through his neck. Well, but I also thought that was a beautiful part too. I, first, I love his whole storyline. Yeah. No, and, and I, the I fact thought the gardener that, was like, the best. He was great. I thought the gardener was the best thing about this film. Yeah, because yeah. he like, and the, the beauty of like, this is his land, really. He works it, he builds it, he's done all this stuff. I loved all that, but but then the beauty of him dying, the innocent, the most innocent one of them all, just fucking dying is another, just, that's our world, right? Yeah. The most innocent fucking people in this capitalistic society just get cut with a bloody glass sword I, in their throat. I felt like the way <laughs> that they killed him off, I'm a big fan of gore and violence and blood in movies, but the way that they killed him off felt so out of character for the movie. It felt unrealistic. It was like he was purposely trying to fall and then he just happened to fall like <laughs> neck down into a broken really sharp bad. glass. It was a little ridiculous. <laughs> It was really bad, especially the wide shot where he like trips. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, it just like the way and maybe it's like an editing slash acting thing, the way they yeah. actually did it. But like it just felt a little too comic-y in a way in a movie that wasn't very comic-y otherwise. Right. To agree with you, though, Kai, I, I, I do think that the Gardner storyline and his char characterization was the most profound or like it was saying i thought it personally said the most out of any other story it's the statement of the movie yeah. which usually the b plot actually is right because you're busy watching the a plot but the b plot is saying the the is the point and i really appreciated that they did not do anything with his body so i like, did too they're like fuck it leave him here yeah i don't care he's gonna just roast in the sun Right, I uh, well, I, it was it was like like that said so much more than any of the other words I, yeah. that anyone says in this whole movie. So in that moment, they yeah, did in what that you one wanted moment in this four and a half hour movie. It was like it was like no, it was an hour and a half. It, it felt it was, like four and a half hours. Oh, I paused. I paused it to drama. go to the restroom. I paused it to go to the restroom, and I'm like, we must be almost like done. And it was 36 minutes into the film, the and I'm like. The runtime is only an hour and 32 minutes. Feel... Yeah, it was I not know, that long. I know, and it long. felt like it was three times as long. <sighs> <sighs> okay, that's a great segue to the acting, yeah. which will be the second category that we talk about. Um, I uh, will go first and say that I thought the acting was not good other than Jesse Plemons. I thought Jesse Plemons was like acting circles around everyone else. I love him so much. I love He was love, so good in this Plemons. role and he was so like he really like owned this role. Jason Siegel I did not believe for even a moment. Like his 
motivations or his like characterization of the of the character um it just wasn't i just wanted so much more from him in some way and not more words because we definitely got enough words um so i i mean i agree that jesse clemens i thought was the best i also just think he's a really really good actor um jason siegel i didn't think he was bad part of the problem is I'm so used to seeing him, like, I still look at him and I think forgetting Sarah Marshall. And that's, like, not really his fault, necessarily, but it's hard for me still to look at him in serious roles, because I just think of him as a comedic actor. Um, I mean, I thought he was alright. I mean, I didn't think he was bad. And then Lily Collins, I thought was fine. I've never seen her in anything else, honestly, so... Um, I have nothing else to base her off of, but I thought she was fine. But I definitely thought Jesse Cle- Jesse Clem- Jesse Plemons was by far the best. I think the Gardener needs an Oscar for this movie. <laughs> for best I thought, supporting I thought actor. the Gardener was great, um, but really, uh, I agree with you on the Jason Siegel thing, and and I I think that. Like, I know him, obviously, from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, like you said, but also I've seen How I Met Your Mother so much that like, right. That's he's true. also Marshall to me. Hello, freaks and geeks. Yep. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Brian, that was your time. Did you watch Freaks and Geeks? Uh, I, I mean, I've seen, like, a couple episodes of it, but I've never, like, watched the whole thing. I actually went back and watched it this last year, not yeah. long ago. So now I up? can't see him as anything. That was also a nice subtle way of calling me old, Travis. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's from your time, right, buddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you used to race home from after school, right? Back and when TVs were in front only of the black and <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Listeners were like all two years apart each, or something like that. We're now Brian's old. He's like fifty. Close. Yeah. <laughs> close. Um, <laughs> but but and I hope Kai agrees with me on this. Um, so many of his characteristic like mannerisms and like how he chose to move his body was so similar to his character in Forgetting Sarah Marshall and How I Met Your Mother that it kept taking me out of it. And I feel like that's the job of the actor in order to like embody this character and figure out and analyze how does this character move with which, what part of your body does this But there's like... a lot of actors who don't do that. He d- he's not, Agreed, he didn't. But we're talking you... about this right, one right, right now. Right, right, right. Well, no, I was just going to say you were, you said um, that he, I, I, you you use the word choice. I don't think he made a choice. I don't think he thought about it. And that's like so many actors, right? Especially ones that like start young, like he did, get into a, they're known for certain things. He does a comedy shtick. Then they don't, they're not trained in the same way that like the, the method actors of the world are, the Joaquin Phoenixes who change their whole body and voice to fit a character, right? It's a totally different situation. Um, but I, I actually didn't hate him in this. I, I wouldn't give him an Oscar for this performance, but I actually, I felt like he was a good casting choice look-wise. Um, he's got those bug eyes that just like can, I don't know. I, I appreciated it and I liked, I, I believe he is, because he always kind of plays the downtrodden character and so I believed that part of him um I really enjoyed the scene between him and Lily Collins and same as you said Brian I've never really seen Lily Collins in anything else I was I looked her up and I realized she's Emily in Paris which is not my type of show so I've not I've I never think, I don't think the three of us have seen her in any like I don't think I've no. seen her in no I before. haven't seen her in anything because most of her stuff is like not stuff that yeah the we'll just put it watch it, put it so that. Dad yeah. still Collins and everything Oh right! Her dad still you her said dad that. Still I calm. think you yeah. said that when we were talking about watching this. Yeah. yeah her dad about still born calm. into money. <laughs> yeah, actually, interesting. Um, I will say she had a pretty good I, American I, accent though, because she's British, but her her American oh, right. accent. At least I'm pretty sure she's. British. Oh yeah, I, d- her dad I didn't think. I'm pretty sure she's French. She's in Paris. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't notice her accent at all, which means that it's a good American accent because I didn't think twice about it. Yeah. Um, but Jesse Plemons stole this for me. Yeah. Like, he just, I just, you know, the other thing, talking about physical characteristics, the fact that he's slightly out of shape 
well, pretty out of shape, actually. More and he's sweaty. Yeah, it was, and he's so sweaty the whole time. And like, he's wearing Yeezys, like doesn't he? have a great, yeah. yeah, wearing Yeezys. He doesn't have a great jawline. Like everything about this man screamed. Oh, he's very unpleasant to look at. And I, I think that's the. But he's not. Well, not, not not like unpleasant, like you're ugly, but like he's not like that that typical like actor look. Yeah, he which... could be. Like I've seen him when he was Friday when he's more in shape. Yeah, he mm. totally can be. The show. Yeah, he he, he, he totally can be. He just song. is not. He's he's more of a character actor, and character mm. actors can gain weight or lose weight or be all sorts of sorts of ways um but he he was he was great in this he his his eye twitch the the it was so subtle but it was like the fucking look that he kept giving everyone like they were so stupid yeah. and they were so inferior to him um and that i i mean he plays that right he he even like in the movie game night he even plays oh, like yeah. everybody oh else is, gosh, is yes. stupid yes. right which is yeah. probably that's like my favorite role of his although i love him I wait love him hold everything. up so i just looked him up he was in breaking bad yeah oh i don't know who yeah. was he in breaking bad um him? he ended up i'm trying to remember it's been a while he worked with jesse and walt he was like not like a cleaner for them but like he helped them almost as like a thug enforcer type gosh i don't remember i don't remember him in breaking bad at all omar leva is the gardener i just want to give a shout out and actually use his name omar leva because he was really good and so uh, i just my heart went out to him like he was he he really cared about this property um yeah he, it looks like he's been around a long time. He's too. not even listed in the cast, like when you Google. when you Google him. But yeah. he is when you go to IMDb. Yeah, no, no, he's no. he and and I love to see this as a actor trying to come up doing little bit things here and there. I always enjoy seeing somebody that is like really good and then looking at their filmography There's on like 162 things on right IMDb. yeah and you're like yeah this guy's been around for a while and he's probably gotten one line here and one line there on like was, a million shows yeah, but like he was cholo number four and right blah, blah, blah. right right exactly but i but it's so i appreciate seeing that he's he was you know in four gotten a bigger role Grey's Anatomy, so he had a little role in oh Grey's yeah Anatomy. he was well, reoccurring. He was, well, he was the custodian. There. Like they have custodians in like. Oh, every you're such. I will. I will put money on it. I bet he... anything that he was a custodian in Grey's Anatomy. Wait, Just a Google sample. Google his name in Grey's Anatomy. Has your son been using um, alcohol? He's a sleep? doctor. Oh, suck it, Trav. Let me see. Let me see. Suck it, Trav. That's not him. That is him. Shondaland, boo boo. Shondaland does isn't she she doesn't play as a uh, stereotypical cast yeah casting um going back to that to um before I completely forget we were talking about Jason Siegel I really appreciate that uh, or you were bringing up sorry you were bringing up the um point that like he started young and like a lot of actors that start young like they get in these habits and they don't want to think about their characters or whatever I think or I wish that they he wasn't in this film that he casted someone else because the story's also by him and he produced it. So I'm like, if we would have just had his mind just on that and like maybe, you know, two more drafts of the script or like, so, and not worrying about, it's so hard to produce and act and like right. build a I character. Also yeah, he, well, actually all of them have producing credits. So I'm assuming it was solo, solo budget that they gave them equity and right, 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 right. I was, the, I was reading after the, the fact that yeah, Jason Siegel apparently like pitched the idea on a Zoom call during quarantine. Yeah, something that was also yeah. like, easy to film during quarantine in one location. Yeah, just a small. lot of people. Well, and that that's that's kind of what I was leading to earlier when I said I really appreciated this movie because the indie film person in me that's is always trying to create my own stuff was like, I could do this. It's so simple, you know. Yeah. That's that's what the the voice that's plotting in my head sounds like. I me I could do it. Yes. Ah. It's better than Christopher Walken talking in your head. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts on acting before we move on to the no. final category? I don't think so. Okay, the final category we'll be discussing today is the technical aspect of the film, and that could be 
but is not limited to directing choices, editing choices, cinematography, score, production design, costume design, but, uh, but, craft but, services but, but, that fed them while they're on set. Um, the anything you possibly think team. of. team. Yes. Brian, any thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I one, of the, one of the first notes, the, for, well, the first couple notes that I wrote down um, were about the music. The, it's almost like an old timey type of music. I don't really know exactly how to describe it, but it was not, it was something that reminded me of like 50s or 60s. And, and I think Kai even said like film noir and it kind of had like a film noir-ish feel to it. Um, and I kind of enjoyed from a cinematography standpoint, the framing and the composition, uh, a lot of things felt like, like I said earlier, like they held, which is also editing, I guess too, but like the shots held for a long time, but things were framed a lot wider in some cases than I felt like they normally would be. Um, but I kind of enjoyed the way it was shot. Yeah. The only thing I will say real quick about the music, there were times that I did write notes later where it felt the music felt a little distracting, where... Yeah, like later in uh, probably third act. I don't. I don't. I didn't write exactly, mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. what it was. By the but... way, guys, Brian is in a band. He knows his music. True, I am a musician. Well, he knows his drumming. I'm a drummer. Right? A lot of people would say I'm not a musician, but I am a drummer. Screw that! Why are you not a? Kai, musician he just bangs things with a stick. I just oh, hit right, things right, really right, hard. Right. Yeah, that's all I hit. And his hard wrist is broken, so it's not even like he hits it well. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Right, Brian? Excuse me, I'm playing. I got your Did back, Did you Brian. just say you Brian just said I'm bad. hit it well? You have my back. You just said I'm bad. <laughs> no, I, but it's because <laughs> no your No one wrist. caught the sexual joke anyway. in there. I did. <laughs> I caught it. Okay. Um, the, so the music is actually composed by Danny Benzi and Sonder Juriones. I probably totally butchered his last name. But um, they are also the composers of Ozark. Homecoming and Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, But specifically, it was interesting to me to see that they were also the composers of Ozark because I had the same thought. I loved the the score of this, like love, love, loved it. Except my only note was that occasionally it felt heavy handed, which I have also thought about Ozark, that I love, love, love it. But occasionally it feels heavy handed. Um, So that's or or it, it occasionally feels like let the scene do the work without the music telling us how we should feel, you know, those, th- that kind of moment. Um, I, I want to talk about, cause you said the way that it was shot that I loved that this movie did opening credits, loved it because it set the tone and the pace, which probably made you Travis feel like it was so slow, <laughs> but no, I, I just like, I loved that they did the credits were just stationary on this shot of the, um, the pool, we the like the bench and the pool, this house we get that we're somewhere Southern California on a property. It's like Santa Barbara wine country or something, right? And and then this slow, beautiful pan over to the open door with the um, curtain just blowing out of it. I I just the opening shot brought me straight into the movie, and then I wanted to go on the ride and. I think that's so important. The like first establishing thing is going to set the whole tone for you and tell you whether or not you want to go on this ride with them or in some cases not. Yeah. You know what's funny? Okay, I'm oh, sorry. You can go. I, I got to get, I got to, I got to, I got to jump in here. He's got to vent. <laughs> first of all, I take such offense to what you just said, Kai. Um, I don't have an issue with any, I mean, I like, I'm, I watch old films all the time. Like it's very like if anything, I love the cinematography of this whole film, and I love what they chose to do. My issue with it being slow is strictly script and story wise. One of my favorite movies in the past fifteen years is Roma, which opens with a five minute continuous shot of a woman mopping the floor right. while title credits go over it. Like I'm down with slow movies. <laughs> um, I mean, do we even need to talk about the Irishman? Like, come on. Like, I'm okay with movies. <laughs> I'm okay with movies taking their time as long as it's like worth it. And um I think it's uh Roger Ebert who says like a good a good movie is never long enough and a bad movie is never short enough. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I always think about that. Like if a movie is good enough, it, it could be five hours and I don't care as long as it's good. Um but in I will agree with what both of you said about the technical side. The technical side for me is the best thing about this movie. And the reason I think or why I'm so critical of it is because it's so damn good on the technical stuff that I wish the other two categories that we talked about were better to elevate this even 
more. Um, I think it's it, it it's going be- like you could tell the director is a film lover from the opening of this movie. Like it's very, um, I hate to say Hitch- Hitchcockian because like it's Hitchcock and it's, but it's film school a bit, yeah, which yeah, and you yeah. went to AFI. So yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very clear that he knows the stuff. He knows what he's like, what he's referencing. He knows like the genre and like the vibe he's going for. Um, and we don't get that a whole lot nowadays other than like a few art house films that like we have to, you know, like find or like dig go to for. a small cinema. Um, to- and, also, I give credit to Netflix because, like, some like the like literally the two other films that I mentioned right now are were also Netflix productions: Roma, Irishman, and Windfall. Not saying that this is anywhere near as good as the other two, <laughs> but my point being, like, Netflix is allowing filmmakers to create these films that like are not this like mainstream quick cut. And they're losing a ton of money right now. <laughs> they are. I mean, but they were bound to lose a lot of money yeah, from the right, beginning. Right, right, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what happens when you spend $3 billion on content um, and bad content at that. I agree. Um, Score-wise, I there's the scene where they're talking, um, the wife and nobody by the fire. Yeah. And the score, like, plays into that yes. scene. And I'm like, we don't need the score while they're talking it's right now. It's so funny. That I was the just scene I wrote down in my notes. That's yeah. the, you see the eye yeah. that That's so funny. I yeah. just looked up. Yeah, I was like, kind of peeling through my notes, um, and I was like, oh yeah, I wrote down the love opening credits. But then I wrote that what you just said, and I also just I know this is like script, but just to mention it since we've already done that part, and I forgot to the the thing in that scene that drove me nuts. I was like, what is that? He's drinking a diet coke. He offers her one, nobody and the wife. Nobody offers the wife a Diet Coke. She turns it down. And then a moment later, when she decides she's going to open up to him, she says, fuck it, I'll take one. Like it's alcohol. Like it's, and I'm like, or it's a Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck it, I, my veins are ready, so hit me. <laughs> right. And I was like, wait, are they like, are was it supposed to look like a beer and they thought in the light it was hidden enough that it's going to look like that? Or is this just terrible? Like what is happening? You don't know. Maybe she doesn't touch sugar sugar at all. You know, she might be a sugar. Diet Coke doesn't have sugar, Brian. It's it's the chemicals that they say kill brain cells in diet Coke. That's what she's like. Damn it. I'll do it. Um, I don't want my brain cells now. (laughs) Partially because I was kind of like, it, it was like this was the scene where I was starting to lose steam for me where I'm like the the pacing and like what's actually happening it's like kind, kind of teetering off for me I thought it was beer but I was not paying attention it's clearly oh, yeah. I, and but, I'm, but, I'm not saying it's not no, I'm just no, saying no. like I, right but that's what so I mean so I'm curious if they were trying to pass it off because he beer. also like pulls it and like cracks it open like and like beer. he oddly wraps his hand around it in a way that was like An actor only does that if they're trying to, like, hide Hide the label. Why not just use a fucking beer? Or it was, like, one of those things where they were like, the PA already left for the day. We're shooting this scene. (laughs) What do we got at Crafty, right? And they're like, I got a 12-pack a day at Coke. (laughs) All right, cool. I've always been like, just use a Corona. Like, the bottle's, like, so hard to read if you, like, face the the backing towards it. Like, it's so nondescript. It's just glass Use. So many Shout out other Corona things. If you want to that, sponsor this podcast, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, or Diet Coke. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Corona. Um, yeah, just anything. Use anything that is not such a giant brand yeah. that you can obviously yeah, yeah. tell what yeah. it is. Yeah. At least, at least, at least use like Dr. Pete or something instead of like Dr. Pepper. The so. hell is Dr. Pete? Because Dr. Pete is like the, there's like a knockoff Dr. Pepper, like Mr. <laughs> like Mr. I thought, Pib. No, that's that's Dr. Pib, no? Or no, no. Mr. Mr. Pib. Pib. But I've heard of do- there's Dr. Pete is like uh, you can get. Like, You're the, lying. The, You're no, lying. No, this has got to be a Texas thing. Store. I don't lie. I don't lie when it comes to soda. Okay. Uh, are you a soda junkie? I Brian is an eight year old boy. Junkie. Okay, so you understood. You were right there with her when she was like, fuck it, I'll take one. I'll do one. <laughs> I'll do one. 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 I will, only one tonight. Only one. They, you got Mr. Pete. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fill her up again. 
<laughs> oh god. No, good times. Just clicking two together. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Just shotgun. Yeah, I wish they shotgun like... and diet coke. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll take yeah. one. She shotguns it. I'll get fucked up. Ah, yeah. Love that, Mr. Peach. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, anyway. Um but yes, I actually had no issues with uh, the the technical. I, I actually really loved almost everything about the technical side, other than that the score was overly played. But the score was still good. Yeah, like it it was still really good. Solid. It just was like the spots were too long and like. <sighs> I did. I I I kind of mentioned this when I talked about the opening scene, but I also just I just loved that they kept going with all of the shots of the orange trees and the debt, like all quintessential California shots Mm. because this state is the state of money and media and the conglomerate corporate, you know? So it was, I just loved that California was such a presence in, in the film. I really appreciate that. Until Texas takes over, am I right? Hell yeah. (laughs) <laughs> All the big tech companies are moving to Texas. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Any uh, final callouts for that? I mean, the technical category is really boring for us because we all just agreed that it was good. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I I I forgot another uh, note about the plot. I'm just all over the place here. Oh no! Wait. Technical. Um. I wrote production design. Love. Shout out Andrew Clark. He was the production designer. Okay. Any final thought? Was that like your final thoughts for the game? No, Any I final have thoughts one or final nitpicks? thought. Nitpicks now for the film before we close this up. I have one final thought. And I, I when I wrote it down, I was like, I love this. But now that we've discussed the film, I'm like, do I love this? <laughs> or do I now see it as incredibly heavy handed? So you've, you've maybe changed my mind wow. here a bit, Travis. I wrote, just take the one step forward. Because when she's when the wife is having the conversation with nobody at the fire pit and she's talking about her wedding day and how she realized her whole life would change if she just took one step forward. Great. Right. She says that. Then the very the like final shot that we watch her do is take the one step forward after she like kills them both. Um, So I I appreciated. I always like when something gets brought back around in the end i'm like oh hazinga you know i just like when scripts i agree but i wish that motif was either set up in the beginning either set up earlier yeah that was my or because we see her feet twice right when she goes to get the money and she there's a shot of her like top down of her feet as she's like like she could cross the um highway line right 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 and I was like, all right, but I that's get it. the interesting it's... part, right? She doesn't. Yeah, but 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 like it's does. like three minutes later, and yeah, she like yeah. takes her step, and I'm like, there needs to be more like right, time right, like that. right. Like, Give a start us from the beginning. So I'm like, that. I would have been okay if they like just didn't show that for that one moment. Right. Like you still get that like in the end that emotional beat and like and like it would land if like the final shot is her taking the right. step forward. Right. 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 But that's if like we actually like you know cared about the female character. I I thought she needed to do exactly what the plot asked her to do, and that's what was unfortunate for me. No oh, right. And she criticizes him for like doing things that are okay. My nitpick time. <laughs> yeah, go go, Travis. Knit it okay. away. Pick so, it away. <clears throat> my first nitpick. A, a, a lot of this stuff is acting. Yeah, you know it's a lot when he right? picks up his tablet to look at all the notes. <laughs> right, and, and, and he goes, "My first yeah. and his um, tablet pen." So uh, I forgot to mention this in the. I, I forgot to mention this in the um um in the the the, the 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 acting portion. But my biggest problem with Jason Siegel isn't like necessarily his choices, but that it was so tonally off. So I guess this could be in the technical category because it's a directing choice. Like the director should have been there and been like, "Why are you acting like a silent film caricature?" And it, like when he's trying to open the purse, he's like, "How does this purse latch open?" Yeah, and I'm like, "What yeah, the?" Yeah, that's like, the kind of weird film noir shit that I was like, "What is happening?" But right it doesn't now? fit with the re- like. Oh my gosh, that drove me crazy. Also, when they're in the orange grove and they're like walking back or whatever right and there's this like wide shot of them walking when they cut to the close-ups you could see they're like slowly walking to like not go ahead of like the camera and i'm like 
it's only because we have like been on sets. We know that like the cameraman's probably like, oh, sh- oh, oh, oh. can yeah. you walk slower? Yeah, right. All right. All right. We're good. We're going in for another take again. Walk slower, yeah. slower. So then the actors take are just like 65 <laughs> yeah. fucking slower, please. <laughs> I know it feels weird, but it looks beautiful. Right, I'm right. telling you. That's it. It's always the actor always gets. I know it. I know this feels weird. Yeah. I know it's uncomfortable. <laughs> but it looks just great. do it. I'm yeah. telling you, just do it. Yeah. Um, the other nitpick that I had for, um, 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 I think that's it, actually. <laughs> well, I was answering that. <laughs> yeah, I've got this whole list. One, two. Um, no, the, um, the wife, how she just says nothing. Never mind. I can concede my time. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. All right. I got nothing. I'm good. I said my piece. So has any of our opinions changed then? Nope. Yeah, no, me neither. neither. It's a bad, good film. I do now actually think it's a bad, good film after our discussion. Whereas before I was kind of like, well, I'm saying that it is for the podcast, but I really just think it's good, good. Um, But I will say that that means that while watching it, I was just thoroughly entertained. So I was not picking it apart as much as I did throughout this session. Um, and so to me, then that's an enjoyable movie worth seeing. But well, we just ruined but it. But in the end, so bad good film. <laughs> <laughs> there was not, wh- while watching it, there was nothing that I was picking apart about other than the plot story and acting. So maybe it's the whole thing. <laughs> other than everything, I didn't pick apart anything. I did have so many times though where I'm like, I am so impressed that they that that this film was made. That like the, that they are doing these long takes, that they are like taking a risk on a film like this, which I appreciate. Question. Have you seen The One I Love? Yes. Did you like that film? Yeah. Okay. I thought that was drastically better than this. I, I agree. I think it was better. I also think that, that part of that is because the DuBlas bro- brothers were involved mm-hmm. who do films like this. And it was Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Moss. Moss. Yes. It was fantastic. That just about sums it up for the film Windfall. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you want to... Uh, yell at us, tell us that we're wrong, maybe agree with us, maybe just tell me why I'm an idiot for the things that I say. Um, you could follow us on all social media at good, bad, bad, good. And you could follow me at all social media, Travis underscore Orozco. And you can follow me. I'm pretty much only on Instagram at Kylena Mai, K A I L E N A M A I. Hey. And Brian? It's your boy up on Instagram, at Bossip, B-O-S-S-I-P. Nice. Brian and I are old. We're like, no more (laughs) social media, just the gram. Brian and I tweet back and forth occasionally. So if you want to come in um, on Twitter and yell at us about sports as well, uh, you could totally do that. (laughs) Yeah, it's a very angry place for me, so it's okay. (laughs) Twitter's a very angry place for (laughs) For a lot of I think that's why I stay off of it. All right, until next time, thank you so much for listening, and we're out. Deuces. Bye. Good Bad Bad Good is an Ex Nihilo production. Original theme music and sound engineering done by Jen Star Hacker. Find her at hackersoundmusic.com. Opinions expressed are solely that of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views of any entity they represent. 